Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And I had someone link me on the Facebook fan page a video by the YouTube Fitness OG Scooby. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skill at my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. Now you guys know a lot of times in this segment I do have negative things to say about people. I'm very critical of a lot of garbage and bullshit and everything else that's put out in the online fitness world because most of it is garbage. Uh, but in this case, I thought this video was pretty good. Now, I'm going to disagree with Scooby on some points. I'm going to disagree with him on some points. But if I were to zoom in and look at the video as a whole, 80 to 90% of it is dead on. And it was so accurate that I would say, hey, you guys need to pay attention. And honestly, the only two points I'm going to disagree with him on are actually pretty minor points, uh, and they may not even be real concerns for the most part. So let's get into the positive. I love how he trashed on pro bodybuilding. What did he say? Pro bodybuilding is unhealthy, and it is essentially a contest to see who can take the most drugs without dying, right? And I, and I do, do agree with that. There's literally no training knowledge in pro bodybuilding. And that's something I say repeatedly over and over and over. Most of those guys couldn't train their way out of a wet paper bag. They know nothing about training. Literally nothing. They're complete morons. And that's a fact. Uh, and they are unhealthy and they are just waiting to die. They're no more healthy than the average 300-pound fat person sitting on the couch. They are just as unhealthy. Uh, he's dead accurate. But the point that he also made uh, was that people need to understand that being healthy and being fit involves a number of things. It involves being physically active. It involves being strong. It involves having a relatively low body fat, being lean, and have, having a diet that's mostly high-quality, unprocessed foods, and a low-stress lifestyle. And he's absolutely correct. He's absolutely correct. Now, he did trash on powerlifters a bit, and I that would be my category. I fall in that category. I'm in the powerlifting world. And one of the things that he pointed out, a lot of powerlifters... Uh, will you know, again say that being strong is more important than being lean and there's some data that would suggest that you know there there is some truth to that but he is right being fat isn't healthy right and there's no way you can train enough to be in perfect health at a higher body fat you might be in decent health but if you want to be truly fit and healthy you, you can't carry excess body fat and I mean this is a point I've I've admitted to because I got relatively fat up over 20 percent body fat uh, in the last few years, and then I dropped, did a 40-pound cut, and I'm going to end up cutting more by the end of the year later. Uh, again, I'm regaining strength and muscle that I lost, and I'm, I'm cutting. Uh, I do cardio every single day, right? I do cardio seven days a week, and I'm a strength athlete. I'm a power lifter. Uh, so I, I think that point does need to be acknowledged. That does need to be acknowledged, and I think even in my sport, we're seeing that change over the last decade. You are seeing a harder push for more conditioning work among powerlifters. You're seeing a harder push for powerlifters to get to lower body fats because you're more competitive. Because at the end of the day, fat doesn't make you lift more weight. Bulking might help you gain more muscle and strength, and that is true, and eating enough to gain fat will help you do that. But the fat itself doesn't lift weight. All right, people need to understand that. Muscle mass equals strength. And the scientific evidence for that is absolutely clear. It is 100% clear that there is like a 90% overlap between the size of a muscle and the strength that that person can generate with it, right? Now, there's other things involved, height, uh, moment arms, bone links, things like that. All that stuff matters, but force generation is determined by muscle mass. The size of your muscle will directly determine how strong that muscle is. It is a direct correlation, but fat doesn't make you stronger, guys. It doesn't make you stronger. We have to be honest about that. Uh, so you are seeing a push, even within the powerlifting world, for guys to get leaner and leaner and leaner so that they can be in the best weight class. In other words, if you have enough muscle and strength to be really competitive in the 198, there's no reason for you to walk around at 21% body fat to be in the 220 when you could diet down and compete in the 198 and crush it, right? It just it doesn't make sense from a competitive perspective. Um, and so we need to keep that in perspective. But he pointed all that out, that this health at every size thing is nonsense. That's just obese people trying to justify their own bad habits, their piss poor lifestyle, um, and, and their bad diets. That you can't be healthy at a high body fat. And he points out the data is overwhelming. What's the number one thing that any person can do to help with their, their heart disease, with their, their cardiovascular disease, their type 2 diabetes? 
lose body fat, right? If you're obese, if you're fat and you drop 30 pounds of body fat and you're type 2 diabetic, it's like half the time it will actually cure your type 2 diabetes. In other words, most of these people, unless you were born diabetic, unless you were born diabetic with type 1, um, it's completely lifestyle induced. And yeah, losing body fat through any diet, through any diet. An exercise combination will resolve the issue. Your your odds of curing your own diabetes just by losing body fat is actually really really high. It's really high. Uh, same thing. All these cardiovascular risk factors. If you lose body fat, if you're carrying extra body fat, your blood work improves. Right. All of your lipid profiles improve. Triglycerides go down. LDL usually goes down. Right. It happens automatically, irrespective of how you even go about doing it. Right. Being lean is healthy. Uh, another thing he talked about was with the cardio stuff. And I would agree you should be doing daily cardio. The point I'm going to disagree, though, on with the cardio, uh, he tried to say that cardio is more important than resistance training. And I'm going to state this as someone who believes in doing daily cardio. That is just not true. Uh, there's been more recent data that's come out in recent years where they've looked at it in big, large-scale epi epidemiology, people who resistance train have better health than people who only do cardio, right? And people need to understand that, that the data is stronger there, that mortality, all risk mortality goes down more for people who only weight lift versus people who only do cardio. So I, that's why I'm going to disagree with him at is that uh, if you can only do one or the other, he says to do cardio, I'm going to say, no, if you can only do one or the other, you need to weight train. But Here's the caveat I'm going to add in. They both have their own independent health benefits. So if you really want to be truly healthy, you do need to do both. So I think that's where we're still going to agree because he's still saying you need to do both. I'm going to say you need to do both. I'm going to say the weight of the evidence suggests that the strength training is more important. However, however, I think where we will both agree is that if you really want to be healthy, if you're concerned with your health, you will do both. You're going to do both, right? There are absolute undeniable health benefits to both, and combined together, there's actually a great synergy there. And let's go over and let's talk about the fact that he pointed out that doing cardio doesn't necessarily cost you gains. I, I'm going to agree. Um, he's got his own stance on why people have that belief, and there's there's other reasons why it is, but let's let's be realistic here. Uh, a lot of the strongest, absolute strongest athletes in the world do cardio, okay? Um, there's been emerging evidence, and you can look at anything from Alex Viata's data, uh, his stuff. Greg Knuckles has put out research on this. Go look at the way the West Side Barbells guys train with all their conditioning, that when you are in better cardiovascular condition, it's easier to gain strength. You have a higher work capacity in the gym, you have better recovery, and if you have more work capacity and better recovery, isn't that why people take steroids? Isn't that the reason athletes use, use anabolics? I'm not talking about bodybuilders. No one gives a shit about moron bodybuilders. They can all drop dead. The hell with them. Uh, I don't care about the bodybuilding world. I don't care about bodybuilding fans. You guys are morons. No one likes you. But let's talk about actually getting strong. All right. That's the reason people use anabolics. They improve work capacity. They improve recovery. Well, so does cardio. Except cardio is good for you and uh, anabolics not so much. So let's, let's be realistic about it. If you want to be as strong as possible, being in good shape cardiovascularly is actually a, a good idea. It will help your gains. And when I say gains, I'm talking about size and strength. I don't separate those two things. I don't draw a distinction between size and strength because that's not what the evidence suggests. A bigger muscle is a stronger muscle. So to me, when we talk about gaining muscle, we gain muscle for the purpose of gaining strength, and we gain strength for the purpose of gaining muscle. They feed into each other. It, it, these aren't separatable. But let's come over to that point. Being in good cardiovascular condition will help you with your weight training. All right, it will benefit your weight training. It will create a synergy between the two. That's a good thing. And let's come back and let's talk about the other thing. Leanness, being leaner, can have its benefits also. Uh, again, especially if you want to be strong in a weight class, 
right? You want to be strong in a weight class and you want to be healthy. The only point I'm going to disagree on, he tries to say, well, you know, uh, it's perfectly healthy to be 6% body fat. That's where I'm going to disagree. That's a major point I'm going to disagree on. That's coming back to this anorexic nonsense. Now, what I will say, he will point out that, you know, we're designed to, to survive famines and therefore that's why we store fat, uh, but there aren't famines anymore. And he's right, which means there's no reason for you to be fat to survive a famine. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm a prepper. I believe in prepping. You need to have a stockpile of food if you're worried about a famine. Have a stockpile of food, ammo, and, and drinking water. There's your, there's your famine survival. You don't need to be fat anymore. But uh, the data does show there is good data. Go look at, again, Dr. Helms' doctoral work. When he looked at the blood work and health markers of pre-contest natural bodybuilders, uh, these guys at 6 and 7% body fat, their blood work looked horrific. It looked absolutely horrific. So I think there is absolutely a threshold where you can get to lane. But let's come over to the point. Is anyone going to have health problems at 10, 11% body fat from being too lean? Absolutely not. In, in other words, if you don't want to get too lean because you're concerned about health issues, you're not going to have those problems at 10% body fat, 11% body fat. So, I mean, if we're going to talk about optimal health, um, it's not actually a bad idea to cut down to those sort of body fat levels. It really isn't. Uh, in fact, it would probably be a good thing. I'm going to say that that's probably your, your health sweet spot, right? Somewhere about 10 to 13% body fat for men, that's actually going to be, I, I personally feel a sweet spot for health and athleticism. And I'll eventually take myself down into that range. I'm taking my time getting there. I'm not in a big hurry. Uh, but, I mean, I'm even going to be doing that. In my last DEXA scan, I came back at 17% body fat after being well over 20%, right? Dropped 40 pounds of body weight. So, I personally will drift in that direction also because I, I happen to agree being leaner than I am even now would benefit my health. Right, getting my conditioning up even further would benefit my health. Getting stronger would benefit my health. And I think the last point that he made was learning to de-stress and, and do things for relaxation. Yep, that's important also because stress is absolutely a killer. Stress is a killer. So all in all, while I disagree with a couple of points that Scooby made, uh, I felt like the video, the positives in the video far outweighed the negatives to the point to where I'm going to say thumbs up, great video. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.